Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Wendy's Kooky Crochet Tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did latch hook and needle felting to create a dog that looks like my dog, Polly. This, um, unfortunately, my dog's not doing too well, so I wanted to make something that truly represents my dog. If you look at the back, the coloring is just spot on for my dog. And um, if you look at the paws, oh my gosh, guys, these paws are just so incredibly cute. I am in love with how this dog came out. So continue watching to see how I made this. All right, so I bought this really cool dog pattern. Of course, I haven't attached the head yet. So I got this dog pattern. It is from, I'm not used to where this camera is. All right, cool. So I got this really cool dog pattern. I haven't attached the head yet from, um, I bought it from Amber's craft shop or Amber's craft store and it's for the doodle dog. It's a crochet pattern and I decided to use it using um, just regular yarn and then I saw this video on um, a YouTube channel and it is from Projectitarian. So Projectitarian and it was um, she was doing a needle felting and fur and I thought it was like the super like the super cool video I'll link it in the description below so you can actually watch this video too because it's really really awesome um, and I knew that if I didn't do fur on my own that I would never get my dog's color to match because this is a oops all right dog's color to match because this is kind of how her fur looks so she has the curly hair she's a miniature poodle and unfortunately she's not doing well and I wanted something that looks like her that really represents her so I have um, the kind of the blackish yarn here and then she has some white stripes and spots that go through the yarn there um, now I will say that this is not um, for the faint at heart the stomach area, her stomach area is very, very fluffy like this. And um, so I used a different kind of yarn for that. So I'm just using um, this really soft baby yarn for her stomach. And then um, this is a homespun yarn that I'm using for the back. And then this yarn, I honestly have no clue what this yarn is. Um, I got it at an estate sale. So I have no clue what this yarn is, but it really matches the way um, that her fur on her tail looks and then like the fur on her back and then she has a ring of fur that's like this that goes all around her neck area and then it goes down around like this and I got what I did was I got some chalk and I just marked like an outline so this is kind of you can see this darker spot here is where there's white fur for her here and then this is black fur here and then her legs have a little bit of black on it but it's mostly white and her belly is all white and then the same for this side here so this is all black here and then her legs are all white on this side but again this is not for the faint of heart here so this is a little bit long so obviously I'm going to have to trim up some of this and I got me some really cute new scissors for Christmas thank you and I got um, some other cool crochet and stuff that I wanted for Christmas which is really nice one of those lights that you wrap around your neck that was really really awesome so here what I did was I got a latch hook and so I crocheted the doll and again this pattern is from um, Amber's craft store on Etsy and I'm just using my yarn here so I'm using my yarn and what I did was for the stomach fur, I just got kind of a piece of cardboard, like literally a piece of cardboard here. So for the stomach fur, I just got a piece of cardboard and all I'm doing is wrapping the fur around it. And this is one inch on each side, so it'll be two inches long, but I fold it in half and hook it around. And then for the longer fur, the black fur, I've got a piece of cardboard here and this is about three inches. So it's a little bit longer. And um, actually, let me see here. I think it is about three, maybe it could be about two inches, but anyway. So now it's about two inches actually. So this makes that about four inches long there, which is what I use for this black fur here. 
And um, the black fur I won't brush out, but the one on the stomach I have been brushing out. And um, I will say this is not for the faint of heart, this project. there's I don't think I would ever do this for anybody else because I would never make money on it. I would never be able to charge enough for anything like this. But again, I wanted a really true representation of what my dog looked like. So I, again, I'm going around and around and around and around here. And... Um, and this is just so it's kind of a consistent size. So I'm just doing this a bunch of times. And just this part right here, probably, so from this white part here to here, probably took me about five hours to do, which is kind of crazy. But, you know, that's the way it is. And uh, I'm okay with it because it's mine and I'm going to keep it. So it doesn't bother me spending that many hours on it. And again, I know that's something that, you know, I probably would never do for anybody else because this is, I would never make money back on something like this. But again, I'm just doing this a whole, whole bunch of times going around and around and around. And I'm doing the part. So this part, again, I'm going to brush out. So I'm doing that part first. Um, and then I'm going to add, so on the sides, I'm going to add the fur that I'm not brushing out. And then I'm going to add the black. So I'm doing the part that I brush out first so I don't accidentally get some of the stuff that I'm not brushing out. I'm caught up in the stuff that I am brushing out. So the one reason I like this is because I can just, I'm not advertising for any pumpkin pie company, by the way. Is I can just cut down so I do this I just cut down the middle like that and um, it gives me even on both sides and so now I have my little strings here uh, I missed a couple Alright, so now I have my little strings here, and all I'm doing is I'm folding these in half right like this, and it takes a while to do this, by the way, so I'm starting with my black line right here on this side, so just starting with this black line right here, and I'm going, the position is open on my latch hook, so this is an open position here, so I'm just going under, and then I'm putting my yarn through right here. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. And then I'm pulling it through, and when you pull it through, it closes it. And then I'm going to pull that down. I'm gonna push that there, and then it closes it again. And then that hooks it in right like that. And then I repeat this process, oh, about a million times here. And I can uh, zoom in to kind of show you how I'm doing this, because it is pretty cool. I'll make a line right there above that one, that way you can see it. So I'm just, and of course it, this would be, this video would be about a million hours long if I uh, filmed the whole thing, so. So I will not be filming the whole thing. I'm just pulling the yarn through right like that. So you just do that over and over and over again.
Okay, so now that I'm done with that, what I'm going to do is I'm saving some of my yarn here that I've already combed out. That way, um, later when I need to felt it, I can just um, use that yarn right there instead of having to um, use some white or anything else. So um, I'm saving that yarn and now what I'm going to do is I'm taking this wire brush and I'm just brushing it out and I'm being really, really careful not to get the black in there because I really don't want to get the black in there. And so I'm just going around to the um, area that I um, put my yarn in and I'm just brushing that out now. And um, I'm also going to um, start cutting it back a bit. So... I'm going to um, finish brushing that out and brush it out really well. And you don't have to do one layer. You could do more than one layer. And now I'm going to take my um, scissors and I'm going to trim it some. So at this point, what I was thinking I would do is just trim it back. I wasn't thinking that I would um, felt the stomach, but I did end up going ahead and felting the stomach also. I ended up felting it or using the felting needles with it just because it was very, very um, poofy and I didn't want it to be quite so, quite so poofy. I wanted it to be just a, a little bit flatter. So that really did the trick for me. And, um, and yeah, of course, I'm not a professional here. I've never felt it before and I've never latched it before. So this is like literally me learning how to do this. So some of this is probably also what not to do, but also I think it turned out really great. Alright, so now I'm at the point where I've got most of the white on the belly side done and on the legs, on the underside of the legs done. And so here I'm just going to comb out this right here. So here I'm just continuing to comb this out and on the paws you may notice like a little black spots that I left and those black spots are going to be where the um, little pads of her feet are and I didn't put any yarn in those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to felt those black spots right there. So I'm just going to felt those in after I'm done um, combing all of this out. And um, again, I decided to go ahead and come on out and then um, use the felting needles to felt it. That seemed to work the best for me. So um, still combing it all out. You can see that I did a whole bunch at one time there and then decided to come it out afterwards. I don't know if that was the right move to do because it made it a little bit um, harder to get in between each and every one of those little grooves there, but it worked out fine. All right, so here again, I'm just continuing to comb this out really nicely here. You can see all this that's coming off here. So I'm going to felt this on it. So I've decided that I don't necessarily want it all to be um, quite this long. And I thought a good way to do that might be to felt some of it, and that would fill in some of the gaps. So that's what I'm doing with it, and um, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Now, I will say that I've literally never felt it anything else ever before, so I'm brand new at this. So I would say I am by far not an expert at felting or doing any of this right here. This is just what I'm doing to try to get a dog that looks like my dog. Let me see if there's anything else on the sides that I added. Oh, look, I added a little bit right here, so I need to go ahead and comb that, this part out a bit. Since I did add a little bit right there. Uh-oh, I don't want to comb that part out though. else over here no so now I got to do these paws the back ones right here I'm just gonna pull that up Start right there. so 
So if you decide like me, if you're going to do something like this and there's some of them that you're not going to comb out and then there's some of them that you are, it'd probably be smart to first do everything that you're going to comb out and then go back and do the things that you're not going to come out, comb out. Um, if I had it to do over again, that's how I would have started. But um, I think I was just not very confident with this, so I wanted to start off doing the tail because I was thinking, you know, if I can get the tail right, then I can do the whole thing. And I thankfully I did get the tail right, so that's lovely. Guys, just FYI, this part, just getting to this part, I mean, like, after I crocheted the whole thing, it literally took me at least a week. Of course, I'm just working on it after I get off work, so I'm not working on it full time or anything like that. But it really, really took me forever just to get this far on, on this. So it's really, this is very time consuming. I don't want anyone to think that this is just going to take, like, a good week to do this whole project because it definitely it took me from beginning to end on everything about a month working on it so it really um the, I mean the whole thing about a month working on it. so it really is a um it really is time consuming but it means a lot to me because this does look like my 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 Polly so it looks like my dog Polly so um really means a lot to me and guys if you're liking what you've seen please consider subscribing to my channel it would really just mean the absolute world to me. I've got this for the most part brushed out now it looks like so what I did was I just bought a beginner kit on Amazon so it came like this this cute little box here and then I put the needles in it um, you just this thing unscrews right here let's see how do I unscrew this word that works right anyway it does unscrew have a little bit of trouble doing that but it does unscrew I think the needles are probably not in the right position for me to unscrew it right this second. That's what my thought is. But anyway, it does come out, does unscrew, and then you put these needles in here, and then there's one that has for just one needle. I'm not sure how that fits in there, but it fits in there somehow. Um, and then there's just this single little thing right here, too. I haven't even used that or tried this one yet, so it has that in it has these little um, finger gloves here which is probably really handy and I should probably use those when I'm doing this so I don't poke myself. It has, I've got to be honest, I have no clue what any of this is for. Like literally no clue. I don't, I don't know what this is for at all. That's probably something I'll learn. Um, and here it has some little wrist things. Again, not real sure what I'm supposed to do with this, but something I'll read up on. It has the little felting mat here. It's kind of cute, little felting mat. Then it has some scissors that it comes with, and it has these different gauges. It has a 36, a 38, and a 40. And I'm using the 36 now. And then again, I don't really know the difference between these. I just grabbed one and started using it. And then it comes with all these really, really cool colors of um, felt here, or the wool that you could felt here. So it's got some black, which I'm going to use for the pads of the dog's um, feet. And it's got just all kinds of cool colors here. And I've seen lots of videos now, and it doesn't really take much to do this. So I'm excited to get started with um, trying to do this. 
So I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put these back in here with the scissors. Kind of smush it down. Maybe it'll all fit back. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one. And I've tried this one out before. So I'm going to use this one. I've tried it out before. And um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, one, I'm going to try to be good and use these little gloves here while I'm holding stuff. So I don't know if you can see this or not. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, so this I have not poked at all and this I have. So this is a bit tighter than this. And so all I've did, and you have to go straight in and out when you do this. So all you're doing is doing like this right here and you're just kind of poking it down. And I don't want it to be super, super even because it's supposed to be my dog's hair and my dog's hair is not even. So I don't want this to be super, super even here. And again, you're just going through and you're just kind of poking it like, right like this over and over and over again. It is kind of satisfying. Look, I've got something on it here. And it is pretty satisfying to be honest with you. So I'm just going to do this for this stomach and the legs area underneath and the pads there. And again, I'm just doing this over and over and over again. I've seen lots of YouTube videos now where people start with the one and then they're like, oh, I should have been using the three this whole time um, because it goes a lot faster. So I've decided I'm just going to start with the three and see how this goes. Now you do have to go in and out um, straight. You can't go at an angle. If you go at an angle, you will um, break your needles here. So make sure you do not go at an angle when you do this and you just do this over and over and over and over and over again <laughs> until it looks right to you and this is kind of more consistent again with what my dog's hair actually looks like I think in my opinion anyway um, and here I'm going to line it with this kind of hair right here or this yarn right here and I'm going to try not to poke myself here and again you just poke it and poke it and poke it and poke it over and over and over again until you kind of get the look that you're going for and try not to poke yourself. It's kind of oddly satisfying too to be honest with you. So I don't want to poke the black in, I just want to do this, this white right here, so. And I am sure this super hurts if you accidentally poke yourself, by the way. And again, I am no expert at doing this, and I don't really want a super tight weave with it. If I did, I would um, probably have to poke it a whole bunch more than I already am. But I do want some of this to come over this way just a little bitty bit. Let's kind of straighten you up just a little bit there so I'm not seeing the ends as much. You kind of have to be a little bit aggressive with it, so you can't be scared to get in there and just be kind of aggressive with it, too. And so, like, when I see holes like this right here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some of this that um, I combed out, and I'm just going to put it in here, and I'm just going to poke that in right like that, and that'll set it in there. And when I stuff this, I did stuff it really, really tight so I could do stuff like this with it because I knew I was wanting to do some of this. I didn't know the extent that I would want to do until after I started, but I did know I was going to want to do some of this. So I did really, really, really stuff this tight.
after I finished here, I'll feel like my arm's getting to work out, huh? So I like the way it's coming together. It's matting together really, really nicely. Again, I'm do the same thing over here with all of this. Try not to poke myself with it. So here, I um, I didn't brush it out as well as I should have, it doesn't look like. So I'm just trying to brush it out again there. And now um, I'm trying to be really, really careful around those black marks and not um, poke those felty needles into the uh, black marks where the paw is going to go. Honestly, it's a little bit hard doing it with this because it is so big and it's... Um, this area is a little bit more detailed, so I do eventually figure out that um, for little areas that are more detailed that I will need to use the um, single one. But I also try to poke that green thing through or the, the shiny yellowish green thing through and um, decided that that doesn't work. So I honestly, I still don't know what that's for, but um, you know. So here I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, nope, that didn't work. So here I got out the um, the single one. So I decided huh, maybe I'll see what a 36 gauge looks like because I don't know what it looks like. I did get it apart so finally. So that's good. And I'm sorry you can't see that on camera. Honestly, I pulled it out with my teeth. That's probably not uh, good or healthy or whatever, but that's how I did it. So anyway, I put it in upside down first and then I figured it out. Yay, figured that out. Now I'm gonna put my little gloves back on. And here I'm just gonna poke in these areas. So I'm kind of positioning it where I want it. And I'm just really poking it a bunch of times. And this really works well for detail. 
So really um, what you're doing here, again, just using the single felting needle for all the details. Now, you know, the big one works well for, um, you know, the big areas that you um, need to do. But for these little details, you definitely want to use the single one. And I ended up using that most of the time, actually, anyway, um, just because I um, like the way I could direct how everything went with it. Um, and just so you guys know, this video of me just doing this right here was over an hour long. So just coming it out and doing the felting part took over an hour and I've just um, really, really speeded it up.
Alright, so now we're going to move on. And I can't get this out. If anybody has any tips on how to do this, I am open to some tips. Because this, I cannot get this to come out at all. Like, not in the least little bit can I get this to come out. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with that.
Now I've decided to go ahead and get my black out and um, use it on the paws and go ahead and just get the paws done. And by the way, after I was done with this process of doing like the paws here, they came out so incredibly cute that I'm in love with felting. Now I just want to felt everything. So if you do try this and you uh, like it, you might get super obsessed about it like I am. So I took the black out and the black didn't really look black to me. It kind of looks green to me, but then I decided that it's probably my lighting because I took it out of that lighting to do another section of um, my dog Polly's face here. So I took it out and did that and it actually um, looked black. So I think that's my lighting. So here I'm just going around and I'm poking it into place just a whole bunch of times. And again, this is speeded up, but it turned out just so incredibly cute. I'm in love with how this turned out, just FYI. So I'm really just poking this like a whole, whole, whole bunch of times going back and forth and I'm doing it around it too. So I'm poking it a whole bunch of times around and then I'm getting my little black there, kind of rolling it up a little bit. And I don't know if you have to roll it up like that. I don't actually think you have to roll it up. I think you can just get it and do whatever you want with it. That piece was a little bit big. So I just got a smaller piece and rolling that up there. So now again, I'm just using my felting needle and I'm going around the edges first and kind of poking the edges in. And then I'm going around the middle part and I do need a little bit more for that. So I'm going to uh, put a little bit more in there. And that's the nice thing with the felting too, is that if you got a little bit um, less than what you need, you can always um, get more. Or if you got too much, you can always pull some out, which that's really, really nice. It's very easy to pull out also. And um, again, I'm just going around the paws here and using my felting needle and I'm poking it where it needs to go in the little paws there.
And what do you guys think? I think this is just so, so massively cute. I'm in love with the, the way this turned out. Seriously, in love with it. Okay, so again, you can see that it's a little on this side, it is coming through, but that's okay because I'm going to put longer um, yarn through there. So I love how the little paws are coming out. They're just so incredibly cute, dude. Seriously, so cute. So I'm going to put, I think I'm going to add a little bit more right here.
All right. So I think we're going to take a little break, outline what the dog looks like one more time. So my dog has a band of white that kind of goes around her neck. So I'm getting this wiry kind of looking white. And again, I don't know what brand this is. Um, and I'm just um, cutting long pieces of it so I can put it kind of that band around her neck there of how the white looks on her. And so I'm going to latch hook that in. And this I'm not going to comb out. So I will not be combing this out at all. So I'm just going to get my latch hook and I'm going to start latch hooking that band of white there. And it kind of goes like kind of in a triangle shape, really, a little bit. So I finished up the white on um, the back of her neck. So now I'm doing her um, paws. So I cut it a little bit um, shorter when I for doing her paws. So then I'm going to start with her paws. I'm just going to go all the way down. I'm going to do um, pretty much all areas on her feet and on the top of her feet and her legs now. So I'm just going to continue like this all the way down the foot and up on the sides here. And I will see you guys back in a bit. All right, guys. So I think I've got most of the white done. So I've got the chest area done. I've got the front of the legs, the back of the legs done. I've got the, uh, the little feet down here done. And the, her white patches on the back are done too. So where she has white over here all of that's done so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, 
like grayish blackish yarn here it is this one that I'm using and she has a, these colors in here this is why I'm using it and this is this yarn right here it is the um, Lion Brand Yarns the Homespun and it is Edwardian is the name of the color there so I'm going to cut a bunch of this yarn now so I'm just going to do this over and over and over again like before Cut the yarn now. I'm going to put this to the side. And then for this yarn, since it's thicker, I'm doing every other one. So I'm not doing just all of them, each individual one. So I'm skipping one. So I'm doing every other one here. So I'm going to start at the bottom right here. So I left a place where I could do one down here. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but before I said I was going to do a white layer in between um, the white that I felt it and the black, a white longer layer, and I decided not to do that um, for a couple of reasons. One is I didn't think I needed it after all, and two, um, I was seriously, seriously thinking I'm going to be playing yarn chicken here and not have enough white of that really stringy white yarn, and I was right. I did end up um, not having enough white so I had to uh, compromise in other ways but that's okay it still turned out really great but I um, of course that means I didn't do this layer of white between um, between the felted white and the black but it came out great All right, guys, so here I'm going to just continue. I'm going to fill in this side, and I'm just going to continue to work my way all the way up, avoiding the white spots. And um, the back of her head is bl all black, so I'm going to do this. Oops, you can't see this, sorry. So I'm going to just continue working my way all the way up now, and then I'm going to do the back of this, the head black. She's got a part on her um, leg here that's black, so I'm just going to continue the black then all the way up and then after that we will work on the head and of course again it's taken me a very long time to do this by the way just just so you know all right everybody so now i'm at the point where i'm going to add the nose and the eyes so i just um went on amazon and ordered this thing it has a bunch of different sizes of noses on it for dogs so I decided this one would probably fit the best with my dog so that is what I'm going to do it has like all these different sizes they're cute my dogs have black noses so the black fits in perfect I may do a little bit of painting on it but I'm not real sure about that yet so we're just gonna do it like this for now so I've got the dog head mostly finished and again this is the pattern I'm from Amber Amber's or Amber Craft Store. So I'm just going to kind of center the nose there. Um, kind of just right in the middle. So there's one, two, three. So one, two, three. 
four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four is that one right there. So I'm just gonna insert this in here as good as I can. That's kind of cute. It's pretty cute actually. So. So now I'm just getting the nose attached as best that I can and um, then I'm attaching the eyes and I'm playing with them just a little bit um, to see what position exactly I um, want them in and um, I would definitely recommend playing with them some to, some to see why, um, see how that you want yours if you make this pattern or if you make any kind of dolls like this. So I would definitely um, just look and see what you want for all of this. and. I definitely wanted it straight across, so I had to play with it some here, but you'll see. I had to take it out, put it back in, but um, it ended up where I really, really like it. So I've got the eyes and nose where I like them. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to work on the face. And I had to adjust my lightning a little bit because I didn't know what was wrong with it. Something's looking off on it. Um, so hopefully I'll figure out how to fix that too. So I'm just poking the eyes in and then I am going to go off camera. I'm going to finish doing some of the white and the black. And I'm going to felt on camera. All right, guys, I've made quite a bit of progress with the head. So... What I did was with the first eye, I got some of my yarn here. So this yarn that I'm using right here, and I just kind of rolled it up, pulled it apart so um, I could felt it. So I felted that around the eye, which I like. That looks like her eye. And then I found some of this yarn. And I honestly, I got it in a state sale. I don't know what kind of yarn it is, but I'll show you how I've done this part with it. And um, I've gotten where I cut some long pieces for her ears and then underneath I did the same thing I just felted this because um, I don't need it to be long and it made the ears stand out a lot if I um, didn't felt it so I went ahead and just felted that and I felted some underneath here too so the ears wouldn't just poke out a lot and um, now I'm going to show you kind of how I did that first eye so you can see like right here I left an area right around this eye that I can um, add the black and felt that too and um, I'm going to be using the single felting tool here I tried this tool and I honestly don't like it I can't get these out without breaking it so I don't know what the trick is I don't know how to get these out but I cannot get these needles out without breaking this so there's got to be something to it but I just don't know how to do it so I've ordered another tool so if you do order this kit remember that these needles are almost impossible to get out of this wood piece so maybe I'll put it there as it's a good kit but um, this wood piece is not it. So um, you may want to order something that has plastic. I did order something that has plastic. Hopefully it'll be in today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my yarn here. Maybe I'll grab a piece that's already kind of fraying and stuff. So I'm just going to grab this, cut a little bit off. And here you can see this is kind of fraying already, which is good. I'm just going to cut these in kind of long pieces. It does get very messy too, just by the way. So I'm gonna kinda of just break it up a little bit like this. Since this really matches my dog's color, 
this is the one I definitely want to use. So I'm just breaking it up a little bit. And this is pretty much what I did for the under the ear too, although I don't know if I would do that again just because it's very hard to do this. And it was extremely, extremely time consuming, so. I don't think I'm gonna do the other ear until I get the other piece in though. So here, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this. I'm gonna put it around the eye. And the stuff that I already have, the black on the other side, I can go ahead and probably felt that one too. So let me just pick up some of this yarn, put it around the eye. And remember with the felting tool, you have to go straight in and out. So just remember that. And I'm also trying to avoid the, um, the kind of the button part here because I did break several needles yesterday. So I broke, or yeah, several of the needles when I was um, poking these in. So just remember the needles are very, very easy to break, especially when doing this type of thing. So, again, I still have to add all the hair to the ears and do the underside of this ear. Um, so now I want to show you, so I used the long one to do the ears because her ears are, um, so I used my long piece of cardboard, wrapped it to do the ears, and then just used the lot chick to put those in there. Uh, now I want to show you how I did this. So this is pretty much the same thing as what's done here on the bottom part. This part I felted, but I'm going to, um, this is where I'm attaching the head to the body here. So that's why I left that smooth there. So here, what I'm doing with this part is I'm just getting my yarn here and I'm getting my little 
my little makeshift thing here to wind it around and again my dog's hair is not going to be all the same length so I am not real real worried about making this all the same length just FYI oh, there's some that's a little bit messed up there I'm just doing this, I'm wrapping it around a whole, whole bunch of times. And then after I get several done, I'm going to go ahead and cut them. All right, and then I'm going to grab my latch hook here. I'm going to move this thing, my little poker out of the way. The one I accidentally poked myself there. And then I'm going to just use my light trick to attach these. So I'm just going to go into the next one right by this one. And I'm going to attach. I'm going to do this for several, maybe a whole row even. Go ahead, attach these. I didn't want to brush this out. I wanted it to look fuzzy like it does um, and still curly like it does. So what I did was I just grabbed, and I don't know what this tool is, but it came with the kit um, for my felting stuff. So here I'm just going to grab this. I'm just going to pull it through kind of and unravel it just like that. And doing that um, makes it look curly without brushing it out. And again, this takes pretty much forever to do but the results look really really great when it's done what I'm doing here I put if you can see like a little bit of um, where I put the black here and black there this is where her mouth and everything's going to go is right here and so I'm going to use um, probably some of the black felt to do that actually and um, so this makes it look cute it makes it look really really curly right here so that's what I'm going with for there and then this for the face what I did for the face was I did the same thing but I did it with the big one and then I cut it twice so I cut it one way and then I cut it in half again and that made it just the right size that I needed for the face here and um, then I just keep doing that over and over and over again and um, when I get back to what I'm going to do with the snout. Um, I will see you back here then. I'll probably go ahead and at least do this part of the ear first and then I'll finish doing the rest of this up to about, at least to about here anyway. And I will see you back there guys. Alright, so now I've got pretty much all of this done right here. So I've got to fluff it up. So I'm just gonna, again going to go through all these little things here, pull through them, and then I'm going to um, poke them in so I can so it's not quite so fluffy. And then I'm going to leave a space. I'm going to felt some um, black wool in there for around the mouth and after that I need to finish up the ear here the ear still has a little bit that needs to be done and I ordered another poker from Amazon of different kinds so we're gonna see if this one works better I'm hoping it does it looks pretty simple
my dog's face is a little bit narrower than what this pattern was so I should have um, changed the pattern up a bit when I made it but I didn't so anyway what I'm doing now is I'm bringing the face um, a little narrower so it um, so it matches more what my dog's looks like and I'm also kind of fluffing up the fur here a bit so also again it matches what my dog's looks like And now it's time. I am finally done. Woohoo! I can start attaching the head to the body. Now I am super excited about that. So I've got where the head and body attaches. So I didn't, it probably would have been a good idea, but I uh, didn't put any stitch markers or anything like that in it. Um, and some people, when they do this, they put um, like the where the heads will turn. So the kind of the doll head turning thing. I don't know what you call it. But anyway, I didn't do that either. So I just tried to get right in the middle of the head and right in the middle of the body. And I'm just using my yarn and I am um, crochet or not crocheting. I am using my yarn and I'm just sewing it up all the way around. Um, just again, sewing it up all the way around and I'm pulling it tight. And in some places I'm making, um, tying it together and making knots so it won't come loose on me while I'm doing this.
Now I'm just making a few final adjustments, kind of where I see there needs to be some adjustments at. So I'm just making a few final little adjustments here. And after this, I am done, guys. Thanks for watching this video everybody. I hope you learned something. I most certainly learned a huge amount making this video and making this dog that looks like my dog Polly. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Push the like button. Leave a comment if you have any comments and happy hooking everybody.